Hello friends, welcome back. Today we are looking at my vintage cookbook collection. Now if you watch my hauls, you've probably seen some of these before, but I figured I would just show them all in one video. So I have this binder style cookbook that I really love from the 1970s and I just think it's really cute. It has so many really cute illustrations in it and I don't know, it's just very, like very late 60s, early 70s. I typically only collect the Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks and then some Betty Crocker cookbooks, but when I saw this one, I couldn't resist. It was just so cute. I've had it for a number of years. I love all the cute illustrations on the different sections, and then they have um, cute ones also on the tabs themselves. And this Pillsbury one I just picked up recently is the only other one that I have that isn't Better Homes and Gardens or Betty Crocker, but it's super cute also from the 60s. I just flipped to a random page and this cake came up, which looks really good. I feel like I should try to make it uh, for a vintage recipe video sometime. Then into the Betty Crocker, we have this Dinner for Two, which is like a binder style. This is from the 60s as well, and I think it's super cute. I haven't, I don't think I've made anything out of this before, but it's just super cute again and with the really cute illustrations inside. Just flipping to a random page, I saw this pumpkin recipe that intrigued me. So I feel like since it's fall, I should try to find some fall-ish recipes to make for videos. I haven't made a video like that in such a long time, but I do want to make more. Um, and then the same style with the kind of coil is this dessert one. I feel like I got this pretty recently as well. I don't even know if I've ever um, looked inside until now, but I thought it was cool. Then we've got the Betty Crocker uh, Working Woman's Cookbook, which I feel like this has to be from the 80s, maybe the late 70s, but um, it did turn out to be from 1982, which did not surprise me at all. I feel like I haven't really looked through this one very much, or at least not in recent times that I can remember, but I noticed they had this basic cookie mix recipe that I thought was interesting, but then I also noticed another pumpkin recipe, so I'm taking this as a sign that I should look through and pick some recipes to make this fall. And then we've got the just Betty Crocker cookbook, the classic. Um, this is probably one of my favorites that I own. I think it's like maybe the third or fourth printing, I think from the 70s. Um, this is the book that I always get comments about, people saying they got this as a wedding gift or got it when they first got married, and I love those comments. <laughs> They're, uh, they just make me really happy. So I'm pretty sure that my mom had this, but this um, cookbook isn't hers um, but I do have some that are hers but I don't know it just has that iconic look so I just love it I think one of the best things about vintage cookbooks like looking through them is all of the photos and then it also has a chart on the front and the back cover so then we've got this Betty Crocker casserole cookbook which I actually didn't know that I owned because it's the exact same size as the Better Homes and Gardens ones it was just mixed in with those so I don't know that I've ever even looked at it before, other than maybe I showed it in a haul when I first got it, but I feel like it is casserole season with the cooler weather coming, so this is perfect. I hear you, Betty, on those advantages, because we all like less dishes, and I don't have a dishwasher, so it's me washing the dishes most of the time. I thought this dish looked interesting, and it turned out to be a, some type of tuna casserole, and they actually have a ton of tuna recipes in here and the other day I was at the grocery store and I noticed that they are now selling um, some like plant-based tuna in the store and I thought oh that's super cool maybe I could use that for a recipe sometime and I guess I could probably do that soon so then I have a few more Betty Crocker but they're like soft um, like they're not hardcover or anything um, these actually were my mom's um, and I found them when I was cleaning out her apartment and that's what I one of the things that I wanted to keep I think I may have like thrifted some of them but I know some of them were hers and I'm pretty sure she told me she got these when she first got married which she got married in like 1980 or I mean I guess maybe before that my parents actually lived together before they got married in 1980 which I feel like is 
probably semi-scandalous at the time, but I think they lived together for like two years before they got married. I used to work at a and and seeing this onion ring recipe reminded me of making onion rings there because at the store I worked at, we made them by hand and I would have to do like 50 pounds of onions at a time, sometimes 100 pounds if it was like we were preparing for the weekend. Fun. Actually, I didn't mind it, but it did take a long time. So then we've got the cooking for one cookbook. And I thought this biscuit recipe looked really interesting because it just makes two biscuits, which um, I'm like 90% gluten free, like occasionally gluten, but it would be nice to make those for John if we were having a meal like where I didn't have to have one instead of a big batch. So then we've got family dinners in a hurry. This is the same style. I'm not sure if this is one I picked up or one that my mom owned. I know there's two for sure that were my mom's, but not sure about this one. So this bread cookbook I know for sure was hers. It's in really rough shape, but I love it anyway. It's definitely very like well-worn and used. It cost $3.95 whenever she bought it, I'm assuming it was either late 70s or like 1980. Um, it clearly has had some water damage too, but the inside isn't too bad at all. I know there's tons of recipes in here that she used to make all the time. And so I'm excited. I have, I don't think I've made anything from it yet, but I'm excited. Maybe I'll do some of that this winter, even though I don't typically eat bread, but John really likes bread, so. I noticed this recipe for the blueberry lemon coffee cake. I know she used to make that all the time. And then I know this one was her um, cookbook as well. Mostly I could tell because it was kind of damaged like the other one, but when I opened it up to like a random page, I found all these sheets of paper with her handwriting where she had written recipes out. So that was unexpected, but um, I guess a happy surprise. I had to take like a little break because I was like feeling really emotional after I found them, but yeah, I guess I probably hadn't really looked inside this one since I took it from her apartment, but um, I think I'm going to laminate those pages so that I can preserve them. I did that with uh, quite a few other like recipes that I had found she had handwritten. So now we move into the Better Homes and Gardens collection. I have quite a few, as you can see, probably more than 30, maybe more than 40. Uh, I have them like stacked up in order of like oldest to newest. So I think it starts out with ones from the 50s and 60s. And on the backs of them, they used to have really pretty like collages of different foods, but then they stopped doing that. So I have them ranging from the 50s right into the 80s. Uh, I would say the mo the predominantly are probably from the 70s. Those seem to be like easier to find, although they're definitely getting a lot harder to find, which makes me a little bit sad. But the whole reason I decided to film this video was I needed to make a list on my phone of all the ones that I already have because I frequently buy ones that I've already had that I already have because I just have so many I can't remember. So once I got all of them out. I decided to film this video. So uh, this cookbook, I've never looked inside before and it's more like a magazine style, like it's not hardcover. And this turned out to be very interesting because it's not just a cookbook, it's like some like weight loss program thing, which I just had never really looked at it too hard before. I don't think I've ever opened it up because I don't remember seeing any of these images, but um, I could probably make a video entirely on this thing. It's I think it's from the 60s um, and yeah it's just interesting. It has a lot of um, cute illustrations in it but I'm sure that it is filled with just horrifying information. Um, but later um, I think I show it. I am actually surprised that I believe their recommended calorie intake was 1500 for the day and I was expecting it to be like a thousand or 1100 so I'll give them credit for that but yeah I'm sure that this is just like completely filled with lots of horrifying information <laughs> after being slightly confused when I was looking at it I decided to take a look at the cover again and then I was like okay this must just be like a 
a plan or something, but yeah, you can see they're saying at least eat 1500 calories, which did surprise me. I thought it would be lower than that. But then I noticed that this, um, all these different like colored like boxes and it reminded me that I used to work with somebody who used to do this weird diet where they had different color containers. Um, I don't really like know anything else about it, but I was like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if it's like related to that. Very interesting anyway. <laughs> then we've got the cooking for two, which I could probably get a lot of use out of since there's only two of us in this house. Again, they still had the pretty backs on them. And then we've got the blender cookbook, which I think is very interesting. I actually have a vintage blender, so I could probably try that out. And then we've got the fondue. I definitely plan on making a fondue video. I actually have a vintage fondue pot and I have like vintage fondue plates, so I've got the whole um, package. So I should really try to do that soonish, but um, I don't think I've ever had fondue before, so I'm actually kind of excited. Plus it's just very like 1970s, so <laughs> it's very much me. It has really cute illustrations inside the book as well. Then we've got good food on a budget. I feel like everyone could use that these days with the inflation rates. And then the meat stretcher cookbook again that could fit in with the with the times now and then on the back of this one i thought it was interesting they have this chart with like prices of meat and per pound and all of that and i think this is from like 1974 if i'm remembering correctly so and just showing you like how much proportion and i just thought wow uh, I haven't bought meat for over a decade, but I do hear people complain about the price of it, so I thought I would look up what the average price of ground beef is in Canada, and I think it was like $12.50 per kg, so <laughs> that's pretty nuts. So then we've got the all-time favorite beef recipes. And then uh, I actually love making things in the crock pot still. I feel like everyone's into the Insta Pot now, but I still love my crock pot. So we could probably make use of some of those. And we've got the Oriental and then meals for one or two, which could probably be useful as well. And then on the back of this cookbook, um, instead of like pictures, it had these emergency substitutions you can use, which I thought was cute. And then we've got a food processor cookbook, which I'm taking is similar to the blender. <laughs> and then the Italian cookbook. I feel like I've made something out of that before. And shortcut recipes. I don't remember, like I didn't remember owning this, so I feel like I must have gotten it fairly recently. And then one dish meals. I love a good one dish meal. <laughs> like minimal dishes, easy to prepare, doesn't take that long. Then we've got the meatless main dishes, which is right up my alley. Um, I think it's cool that they had things like this even back in the 80s. People like to assume it's like a new trend, but it's really not. I thought this little blurb was rather funny. Also, I thought it was rather funny that they are, have a meatless cookbook, but they had to put in pictures of meat in it. <laughs> This holiday cookbook is my favorite out of the Better Homes and Gardens. This one's from 1959. I have definitely made quite a few things out of it. I just love the holidays anyway, and it's super festive. They have extremely cute illustrations inside, and it just makes me really happy. I've probably spent more time looking at this book than any other books. I think the back of this one looks really cute as well. It has the four different photos and a little write-up for each of the holidays. Then we've got the casserole cookbook. I didn't remember owning this one either, but again, it's casserole season, so I'm sure I would be able to find some recipes I could make in there fairly easily. And while I was flipping through, um, I found this postage rate. Um, from 1988 in there, which I thought was interesting. You never know what you're gonna find in a cookbook. So then I also have this cranberry one. This is a fairly recent um, find as well. And then the after work cookbook, I'm assuming that would be easy-ish recipes to make. And we've got the all-time favorite vegetable cookbook, also right up my alley. 
whenever I take these out to browse through them, I usually uh, will put like tabs into like recipes that I want to try. So I'm pretty sure this one has quite a few tabs in it. <laughs> I've looked at this one a lot. Then we've got soups and stews, another great one for this time of year. I'm actually not really big on soup, but John is very big on soup. He could eat it every day. And we've got another bread one, the all-time favorite bread recipes. I'm sure there's lots of things in there that I could easily make, because most bread is just naturally vegan. We've got the Mexican cookbook. Mexican is actually like extremely easy to make plant-based as well, so I'm sure there's lots in there I could do. And then we've got the all-time salad favorites. I love salad. I could eat salad every day the way John could eat soup every day. And then on the back of that one, they had all the different greens, which I thought was cute. And we've got low-cost cooking. I think I might reorganize these cookbooks to be like put similar ones together. I think that would make it easier for me if I was thinking about making a recipe or finding a recipe to make. And then we've got casual entertaining, much like the holiday cookbook. I love this one. I just love uh, that style of books. And I had to show you the inside photos. If this doesn't scream like late 70s, early 80s, I don't know what does. But they always have the best photos, I think, in those type of cookbooks. And we've got um, more from your walk. I actually make stir fry a lot. It's one of my favorite things to eat. And we've got another pasta one, much like the Italian one. That's what I mean about grouping similar ones together instead of the way I have it done right now. And they have different pasta like cooking times. The low salt I just found recently and the brown baggers. These ones have like a glossier finish to them. I think these were the 1980s ones. So they must have changed the style. I'm assuming they just have a lot of sandwich type recipes in here and then um, probably some soup as well. There's nothing like uh, 80s BPA plastic to hold your hot soup for the day. <laughs> I have never heard of this before, but this might be one of the grossest things I've ever seen in a vintage cookbook. It's a whole egg wrapped in like ground sausage and then rolled in cracker crumbs and baked. I feel like they should call this a cholesterol bomb. And then at the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got eating light. Um, this is probably up my alley as well, but this picture on the front is like a stuffed half of a pineapple and it looked really good so then i also have these books the encyclopedia books from better homes and gardens so there's 18 it goes from a to z i keep these out in the kitchen on my little microwave um cart but i don't have a microwave there so i just use it for cookbooks um i actually do look at these fairly frequently i got these this year and they're almost in new condition and then in addition to cookbooks, I have these little card sets. Um, I believe they're from the UK and I believe they're from the 70s as well. But they just have cards inside with the recipes like written on them. They usually have a photo and all the ingredients on the front and then on the back they have the instructions as like an ABC thing. And they usually have like a helpful hint or a tip or something on there as well. I love the photos. They're just so 1970s aesthetic. And then in the same type of style, I have the Betty Crocker um, recipe set in the avocado green. I love this. I, I always see this in vintage magazines, like an ad for it. And I think it costs like $4.95. You like mail a little card in to, to get it. But I just keep these out here in my microwave stand. And then I almost forgot, but I actually keep more cookbooks um, in this stand up above, mostly just related to baking. So I have this Betty Crocker cookie book, which is a soft cover one. We've got Better Homes and Gardens pies, cookies, and candies. I've definitely made recipes out of this one. I think I've filmed some videos too. 
Then we've got pies and cakes. I think most of these are also like 1950s, 1960s um, books. Then we've got the dessert cookbook. They're literally just so pretty. And then we've got this cake decorating one, creative cake decorating. That one's from the 80s. And then I do have a few Wilton. Um, I don't know how old that first one is, but we've got the Wilton um, yearbook of cake decorating. I think this one's from like mid 70s. Um, just such beautiful cakes inside. I love looking at these ones. I haven't looked at them in a while, but just such beautiful, intricate cakes. And this as the Snow White set. I actually had this for one of my birthdays when I was a kid. So when I saw that, it gave me so much nostalgia. I also love looking at all of the different like wedding toppers. This is just it's so different looking, I guess, than today. I'm sure you can probably find some of these on eBay, but I thought it would be really neat if you were having like a vintage styled wedding or something, if you were able to find one on eBay, just add to it. And then we've got the 1979 cake decorating, which also has, I wanted to see what I had tabbed and it was some Easter cake. So maybe this year or like next Easter, I will make an Easter cake and film it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again soon.